Come on, fool. Sit down. Come on, fool. Come here, girl. Fire, fire. Thank you, fool. What's up, YouTube? It's Tim back with some more content. Oh, look at her. Look at her. We back outside. Look at her. I just had to show you guys food. Everybody got to see food. This is the world's best. Look at her. Look how, look how big she is. You would thought this was a dude. Like, this is a, a male Frenchie. Beautiful. Like, got her little ice on her for the day. Shoot. Look at her speaking to the camera. Go ahead, talk to him. All right, man. I just really wanted to show you guys food. This is the the Frenchie that we got bred. Uh, we haven't confirmed yet. You know, that's how that goes. We had to do three, like literally three pedestrian tests on her before we really got ready. Uh, this is our first breeding. So got to get that baseline because you really got to understand how she works. You know, and you know when she really goes into ovulation. All dogs are different. All dogs are different. You know, a lot of people like to say the typical dog goes into ovulation, or you should start breeding between 11 to 13 days, or and that's for the typical dog. And I got that information from my pups. So shout out to my pups. That is my guy. He is definitely dope with the content. Hopefully, I can bring that same sort of content to this page. So you guys stay tuned. But today, what we're talking about is pedestrian testing. It is a necessary evil to anybody's breeding uh, program, your yard. Uh, if you just want to breed your dog just for family pets, uh, you know, give out a good, you know, good structured dog to your family, or you're truly, you know, starting a program from the bottom up. So yeah, all about pedestrian. You guys stay tuned. Take it all with a tall print. If you feel it, do it with me. And just sing what the song says. Take it all for what it is. Let's just hop right into it. Pedestrian testing is a necessary evil. Like I just said, it is very necessary to A, getting a small litter, or B, getting a very hefty sized litter. So you guys gotta do the pedestrian test. So, uh, and, and I want to say this before I jump all into it. For you guys that have the pedestrian testing machine, I hate y'all. I was on Alibaba trying to look for one. I'm everywhere trying to find one for a good price. I'm on my pup's page, his website. He has them. Everybody wants like $3,000 for them. But like to say all that, like it's the best investment when you are a breeder. When you can literally wake up and test whenever you want because as soon as that dog hits after five because everybody uses uh i think the the industry standard is an idex machine so you got the idex machine you hit like a five after a five the dog's in ovulation two days after that you want to start breeding so for you guys that actually have that in house you guys are blessed and i hate everything about you not actually, I don't hate none of y'all, man. Good job, you guys, for putting the effort in and investing in your, your, your kennel. So uh, one day I'll be there, but as of right now, we're not there. But we're discussing pedestrian when you're in a place where you don't have it or if you do have the machine. So, like I said, when the dog hits after a five, after a five, generally speaking, the dog is in ovulation. Then a couple of days after that, you can actually breed the dog. But you would want to do a few AIs at that point after the dog hits five. So I guess I should kind of rewind back six days after first blood. So as soon as your dog, look, and food's still out here. She's acting up. She's just trying to ruin my YouTube channel, man. She just wants all the shine. But six days after first blood, you guys have to be hawk eye on the ground if you're truly trying to get a successful litter and trying to breed your female at home. So as soon as you see first blood, that's when the clock starts ticking. Like literally that's when it starts ticking from there. So what I do, and I don't know what you guys do, but this is what works for me, six to eight days after first blood is when I do my first baseline test just to see where this dog, especially if you're working with multiple dogs, and I got two females on my yard, so you guys, if you have multiple females, 
you have to get used to their internal workings and when they go into ovulation because just like human beings they are unique in their own way as well so around six to eight days i do my first baseline today we actually did uh justice and we spoke a little bit about her uh her breeding that's coming up with Natsu on the first on the last video. So we actually did her first pedestrian test and we got the results and she was at a 1.4 on I think this is day 11. Uh, no, 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 it's day 8. I'm sorry. It's, it's this day 8. So we're on day 8 and she's at a 1.4. From here, she can literally skyrocket to a 5 in the next couple of days. We're doing the surgical on her so we can really take her IDEX uh, number all the way up to a 20. But if we was really gonna do an AI on her, then we really would wanna wait until she hits above an eight or at an eight, and then we would start AI in her after that. So generally speaking, if we're in that window between, I think 11 to 13 days, then that dog can actually start being AI'd at that point. But like I said, we're doing a surgical on Justice, so We'll probably wait until after that 13th day, do another pedestrian test. And that's what I'm saying, guys, like, and that's my sad face because this is the investing side of actually doing breedings and actually being in the dog world. It is a necessary evil because you guys don't want to be out here just shooting in the dark, trying to figure out uh hopefully the dog takes. Like you got to understand the numbers, the levels, get your baseline. Make sure you count out because you don't want to take it too early. If you wait, uh, if you wait only three days after first blood, that dog may be at like a 0 0.4. So always wait at least six to eight days. Like that works for me. And that's like my best value add with you guys. We're telling you guys about pedestrian testing and really getting a successful litter on the ground. It's waiting six to eight days because you don't want to throw money at this over and over again you got to get it's a hell of a color uh, it's a hell of a turn uh, a learning curve but you guys got to get ahead of it or you'll end up throwing money at it uh, right now in the city it's 80 dollars for a pedestrian test and i've been to certain other veterinary clinics hospitals and they'll charge up to 150 so you guys really want to get ahead of this or you got to really throw that money down money down bring that bag throw it down and buy the machine but until then six to eight days do your first pedestrian test see where you're sitting by six to eight days you should be decently close like i said even with justice she's at 1.4 and she's over three years old so she's in, she's getting close to ovulation and that's after eight days i mean that's literally after eight days so we can literally sit back and wait another two two or three days before we retest her hopefully by monday we should be above uh, at least an eight if not we should be we should be definitely in ovulation by monday so if you guys do the math you know day one was like on the 13th this is day eight and you know we wait a couple more days like five more days we'll be past that 13th mark but we're not doing an ai but if you wait if we were going to ai her i would be literally looking for another pedestrian test in the next maybe two days yeah maybe in the next two days but we're surgically and you know doing a, a surgical ai on her so for us it's kind of like we could just sit back and wait until monday exactly because if she's not in ovulation now we still always got four days so even if she goes in ovulation on saturday we got four days after saturday so it really really gets intricate but you guys got to do the research really understand if you can really pinpoint like justice is at a 1.4 if i get her tested on monday and she's at a 10 or a 15 that means from friday and saturday and sunday we got until tuesday to really get her artificially inseminated we have to do the surgical on tuesday because that's four days of ovulation outside of that you you got that four day window and that's what you guys are looking for that four day window right at right when she hits five you got four days and that's from the research that I got. If I'm wrong, you guys go down in the comments, let me know. But other than from what I know and what I've done in the past, you got a four day window. So if you can guesstimate when that dog really truly hit after five, then you could truly see where her window was for ovulation. But like I said, right now she's at a 
my hopes is by the 20 by Monday she's around that 10 to 11 we may we may do a pedestrian but I'm, I'm I'm really thinking we'll have we'll have to do one just to make sure she didn't skyrocket in the ovulation because for AI like I said you guys want to be at least at a 20 because you got to think the uh, the semen doesn't have to travel the canal it's literally going straight into the eggs it's going right into those horns and right into the eggs it doesn't have to follow that canal if you were going to do a, a traditional straight AI through the canal, it would take too long if you're at a 20. You're at a 20 and you're putting it in her canal and just doing a regular AI, it's going to literally have to travel through her canal, then go into the, that's going, that may take a good 24 to 48 hours. So you'll miss, you'll miss it. You'll just blow your money. And the next thing you know, you, you're hollering at the dude that had the stud and worrying about if you could do a redo and then you're paying you know, more for the shipping, like that $350 for more shipping. So you guys have to time that right. But anything between a 15, above a 15, to a 20, you're good with the surgical AI. You're going right into the horns. I think that's the reason why that's the, the industry standard with, you know, with these high priced dogs and you know, people that really want a successful breeding, you have to invest in that surgical AI. That surgical AI is a no brainer, especially if you can really get that uh, relationship built with the vet and really have a vet that knows what he's doing, gives you a good price, it's a great investment. But outside of that, that machine, and like I said, you guys have got that machine, oh my God. I want one so bad. One day I'm gonna get there, but as of right now, we're gonna play the progesterone game. And a couple of uh, other research and references, is check out my pups. He has the chart and everything up. I try to give it like a dumbed down version, just for, you know, just the common folk, like anything after five, wait six to eight days, hopefully you're by, you know, wait six to eight days, get your baseline. Soon as you hit five, you know, start breeding her with the AI. Just wait two days, wait two days after you hit five, and AI, AI, skip one, and then AY, AI. So you want an AI on the first day, AI on the second day, skip one, and then AI again. That's that four day window if you're doing with the AI, just like a traditional AI. But like I said, I'm doing a surgical, so I just want to make sure that she's above a certain number. Once she hit above a 15, I'm just going to go ahead and surgically put it directly into the horns. No guesswork, and we sit back and hope that God blesses us because at the end of the day, we don't have no control over this. So uh, this is just nature, but as long as you understand the ins and outs and the levels, you can at least have some type of assurability that you're gonna get it done. And like I said, man, it's a stressful situation because you got a lot of, you know, a lot of time invested. You wanna see great dogs being, you know, produced. You wanna get back to the culture. You wanna create something that's awesome with a dog that you love. Cause you know, beyond that, we love these dogs, but at the end of the day, you really wanna create something that's awesome and with something that's a foundation dog like i'm in love with justice's look only thing that i would love to see her bring uh bring to the table as far as her offspring is just a little bit more shoulder other than that she is a beautiful beautiful specimen so uh hopefully i gave you guys a really really good like explanation of pedestrian and how important it is and if you guys are really ready really really ready for that investment it is a sure shot takes all the guesswork and like I said I had to do three three pedestrian tests with Fuji and I mean whew, Jesus man you guys I don't I feel for the guys in certain states that got to pay $150 for a pedestrian machine uh, for pedestrian test like I couldn't imagine paying that much uh, for a test like and I think uh, on IG, I actually seen a post not too long ago of the reason why these dogs are that much more expensive than other dogs because it's so much more of an investment that goes behind having a successful litter. This is not one of those like narrow head dogs that can literally just have natural births or you know natural you know breedings like they just can't sit them in the basement in a baby pool and you know and just walk away it's not one of those things you're dealing with a dog with a big old round head and you know big shoulders like you can't put that type of stress on a, a, a mom 
you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare do that to justice. Uh, she would definitely just be going to get a regular a C-section and, you know, not doing anything vaginally with the type of dogs I want to breed her to. Like I said, man, if you guys love the content, like, comment, subscribe, I sh definitely should have said that ahead of time, but I believe you guys are going to love my content. And uh, like I said, man, like I said all the time, I don't know what you guys is doing in y'all's yard, but this is what we doing in ours. Peace.